Hi, I am Jenny Rushmore of Cashmere, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a knit neckband. I'm going to be showing you on the Eustace t-shirt. So let's get going. Here is my neckband. The first thing that I'm going to do is fold it in half along the length. I never know whether to call that lengthwise, widthwise, who knows, anyway. And then pin the ends together. Again, it's a short seam, two pins is fine. Now I'm going to sew across this end. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so now the end of the neckband is sewn. So I'm going to press, Flat, which is the first thing you want to do anytime you're pressing. And then I'm going to open it up. I'm going to spread the seam allowances apart with my fingers and then I'm going to press them open. Okay, now that's done, what we need to do is fold the whole thing wrong sides together. So what that means is pulling it in half like this all the way around. So it's going to end up looking like this. What I find easiest is to press it section by section. So I'm going to line up the notches here and the seam here and just press this flat. There we go. Then I'm going to move to the next section. The third section. And the final section. Okay. And now I'm just going to do a final press and press the whole thing flat. You can use a little bit of steam if you have it. Okay, so I now have the neckband. Now there's an optional stage, there's an optional step now, which I will show you, which is to baste around the edge of the open edge here. And basically what that will do is just make it a little bit easier when we come to insert the neckband. So over to the sewing machine to do the basting. Okay, so I'm gonna take the loop. It doesn't actually matter for basting what side it's on, so I'm just gonna place it here. And the main thing is, is that you just want the sewing to be at less than a half an inch, so within the seam allowance. So I'm just going to align the piece of fabric with the edge of my presser foot, because that is roughly a quarter of an inch. And I shall just sew all the way around. This time, no need to backstitch. I didn't use pins because I don't need to all the time, but you certainly could do pins to um, help you do it evenly. Okay, so now we have our neckband ready to insert. So something just to note about the neckband first. So we've got the seam that we sewed. This is gonna be the aligned with the center back. And then the um, notches that you made in the neckband, there is one that is the opposite side of the center back. So this is the center front. And then there are two notches that correspond with the um, shoulder seams. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pin it to the top. So you take the front and back and you spread them out and you place them on your surface right sides up. And I would say that this is probably the trickiest bit of making a t-shirt, but it's also not actually that hard. Now, if you didn't already, which looks like I didn't, you need to make a notch at the center front and center back of your neckline. It's easy to do that. You just need to fold it in half. So I'm just going to fold it in half here, line these up. Okay, so that's my center back. and line it up in the other direction. That's my center front. Okay, so I need those to help me with this pinning. So lay it back out again. There we go. So get your, get your band. Now we want to match the raw edges of the neckband up with the raw edges of the neckline. So I'm gonna start by getting where the seam is in the neckband and lining it up with that center back notch that I just 
made. And I'm going to place it there and I'm going to pin it. So then I'm going to pin the center front. Now, you want to make sure that this isn't twisted the wrong way. So you need to think about it, that it's going consistently all the way around, okay? There we go, like that. So I find the center front notch on the neckband, the center front notch on my top, and pin. Now I'm gonna find the shoulder notch on the neckband here, and I am going to, surprise, surprise, attach it to the shoulder. There we go. And now I'm going to do the other side. And the um, you will have pressed the shoulder seams in the top backwards, so let me just check. So when you've done that, you want to make sure that your pin is also going through the seam allowance pressed backwards. Okay, now what you will see pretty quickly is that the neckband is actually slightly shorter than the neckline underneath. And that's intentional because basically it slightly pings into shape and that's how you get a t-shirt neckband look. But to make it a little bit easier to sew, you then want to add more pins halfway from the neckband and halfway along the uh, neckline. So it's about there. You can estimate it a little bit. I'm going to pin here. So you're just segmenting this to make it a little easy to sew. So I'm going to go in the middle here. Again, and one thing you can do is you can stretch it a little bit. You're going to be doing this later to find the middle point. If you really want to get accurate, you could also measure it. But I eyeball it a little bit. Okay. So now we have pins at the top and bottom, shoulders and in between each segment. Um, if you want, you can add more pins here, but in a funny way, I think actually this amount makes it the easiest to sew. So now over to the sewing machine for a slightly different sewing technique. So because the band is slightly shorter than the neckline, and you can see that if I hold it up, can you see that this is the neckline and there's more fabric and there's less fabric here? What you're going to do is you're going to sew section by section and as you do it, you are going to stretch the neckband just a little bit until it's flat with the, neck, with the neckline underneath. So the goal is not to stretch this part, it's to stretch this part until it matches. So as you are going through the machine, you are going to hold the neckband, just pull it a little bit, but only the neckband, not this piece. And you're gonna do it section by section between the pins. So I like to start at the back because that's the least visible place. And the other thing I want to suggest, if you have this on your machine and most machines have it, you can remove this section and it makes it easier. It's called a free arm. It makes it much easier to sew things that are round because you literally slip it round the machine like this. So if you have a free arm, I recommend using that. So I'm going to place this in and make sure that the edge of the fabric is at the half inch seam allowance mark. I'm gonna hold the neckband and slightly pull as I go. So I'm gonna start back stitching and slightly pull until I hit this, well don't hit the pin, until I reach just before the pin, take that out. So now I have the next segment and again, I need to slightly stretch the neckband. Next pin, and you can see why you want to like evenly have divided them. And remember, you can go as slow as you want. You want to keep on making sure that it's lined up underneath. It's very easy for it to slip. Okay, so pull. As you can see, I'm only pulling a little bit. I'm not pulling super, super hard. As you do this, your basting may pop out, which you can see mine is doing, but that's okay. So again, make sure it isn't puckering underneath there and pull. And keep on segmenting all the way around. Just 
stitch. And there you go. One good idea at this point is to look on the back and just make sure that you caught it all the way around and there aren't any major puckers. There's actually, look, see, even I'm not perfect. There is a little pucker here. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm going to seam rip just that section and actually redo it. So to do that, I am just going to unpick either side of this area. Zigzags are actually a little bit harder to undo, but this one isn't too bad. There we go. And on the back side, it's gonna come out too. Okay. So now I'm going to re-sew this section. And what happened is I didn't pull the band enough and that's why that happened. Okay, so I'm gonna go back a little bit to overlap the stitching. Okay, and now I'm gonna pull it a bit more than I had. Back stitch. And now let's see if that's better. Yes, that's much better. So I don't have the puckers in there. So if you make a mistake, that's what you do. Now the edge of the seam allowance has been finished. We need to press the neck band to kind of finish that. So the first thing you're gonna do is lay it out. Wrong side up. Get it here. There we go. And what you'll see is that the neck band kind of um, wants to flip in the way that it's meant to. So basically the folded top of the neck band is gonna go in towards the middle of the circle and the finished edge is gonna come out towards the inside of the garment. And because that this is a rounded curved edge, I always recommend pressing on a tailor's ham. And if you don't have one, you can use a rolled up towel, but it helps you retain the curve. So I'm going to place one section under, just again, use my fingers to put it in the direction it needs to be. And then I am just going to use my iron to press it in the direction it needs to go. Now I will say that some jerseys are a little bit springy, so it'll kind of want to spring back and that's okay. We're just trying to encourage it <laughs> to go in the right direction. Around there, continue. And you just keep on moving it over the ham as needed. Now you're gonna flip it over. Um, I recommend that you use a press cloth. I'm not going to, just to make it clear for you to see. But the nice thing about a press cloth, which is basically just a piece of sheer fabric, is that it protects your fabric from the iron. Um, if there are some knits especially that go shiny if they have slightly too much heat on them, so it protects it from that. Also, occasionally, I don't know if you have this issue, occasionally like I'll have an iron like explode and water will come out of it and like strange stains and it will help avoid that. However, look at me going on the, uh, being a rebel, taking on the, risky side and I'm just going to press it from the right side now. So make sure again that the seam allowance is pressing this way. So I'm constantly as I'm going around repositioning it. Now there is one extra thing you can do if you like. Um, it's not in the instructions, but it's a bonus. You can do another zigzag just outside this seam around. And what it does is it secures the seam allowance down and totally stops it from moving or flipping. Um, I do recommend it, it is a nice thing to do. The only thing I'd say is, if you are making a solid color t-shirt, you really need to make that stitching very, very accurate, or it will kind of like jump out at you when you're wearing it and not look so professional. So especially as a beginner, if you're going to do that additional line of stitching, just go really, really carefully and really slowly because it is something that can sometimes make t-shirts look a bit more handmade um, as opposed to looking like you bought them in a shop. Okay, so there we go. The neck band is now installed. It's sitting in the proper direction and it's looking pretty snazzy if I say so myself. For more videos and more tips and tricks when you're learning to sew, 
check out our website at cashmeret.com forward slash learn to sew. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter that's specifically for beginners. Go to cashmeret.com forward slash learn to sew newsletter. Mm -hmm.